A hero of mine, Thomas Edison, always said, there's a way to do it better. Find it. My question today is, how do we think like Mr. Edison? How do we shape the world so that it has fewer problems and more people living better, more fulfilling lives? I want to talk about innovation, specifically innovation in today's medical industry, and how we can apply existing technologies in ways that help people live better lives. This is Angel. In 2006, at the age of five, Angel was in a car accident that left her paralyzed from the neck down. After six months in rehabilitation, she will never be able to move any part of her body below the neck. Yet, she has an or ordinary functioning mind of a 10-year-old girl. Angel comes from a low-income family, so her parents have to work upwards of 10 hours a day. And because of that, the government's provided home care for her, so she'll be taken care of when her parents aren't at home. Now, you can imagine some of the problems that Angel has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But you aren't really getting the whole picture. Quadriplegics, paraplegics, and other immobile patients have to deal with secondary uh, medical complications like pressure ulcers. Now, pressure ulcers occur when there's constant pressure on a certain part of the body for an extended period of time. And what, that, what happens is the blood flow to that tissue stops, and the, the tissue there dies. And what happens is this cavity starts to form. Now, that cavity gets deeper and deeper. Now that cavity gets deeper and deeper, eventually reaching the muscles, the ligaments, and the bones. So, considering all the problems that these immo so, <laughs> considering all the problems that these immobile patients already have to deal with, you have to factor in secondary medical complications like this. My question is. How do we help people angel? People like angel aren't like you and me. They can't adjust themselves when there's too much pressure on a certain part of their body over a long period of time. But there's a solution to this. When healthcare professionals come and adjust the weight of a child, or a patient every hour or so. And what happens is that pressure is alleviated and, they, and, they can, and they're safe from pressure ulcers. Now, as you can imagine, this isn't really a one-time deal. Assuming that they have to be, have their weight adjusted every hour, that means they'll have to be adjusted 10 times a day and approximately 3,650 times a year. And by the time Angel is 18, she will have been adjusted almost 50,000 times. And when you extend that number into her adult and senior years, that number easily reaches the hundreds of thousands. So my question is, how do we, how do we reduce that number a little? I mean, that's a really big number. Considering, considering the $191.6 billion that Canada spent on healthcare last year, how, how do we make the process a little more efficient? That 50,000 is a little too high. Now, it's extremely unfair that 29% of all immobile patients will develop pressure ulcers at some point in their lifetime. So this summer, um, I worked at a small packaging design company called AFA Systems, and what they do is they make machinery that puts your cereal, your soda, and your crackers into boxes. And what happens is they, they, repeat, this, um, they repeat this process many, many times. And as you can see, these machines are designed to do a process like this millions and millions of times. So if something like this, a simple and repetitive motion, can be done in the manufacturing industry, how come we can't do something like this in the healthcare industry? How come we can't take technologies that we already have and apply them in ways that really help people? So this is the idea that I came up with. Um, it's a pneumatic pad, and it has eight chambers on it that each inflate individually. And you'll get a better sense of how it works if you look at the second picture here. So what happens is the gray chambers on this pad inflate independently of the white chambers, so that when the white chambers inflate, the gray chambers deflate a little. And over an hour, that process reverses itself, so the gray chambers deflate and the white chambers inflate. Now what this does is it simulates the effect that a caregiver does without having her actually be there to adjust the weight. And now what this means is that instead of having to adjust the weight of that child, over and over again throughout his or her life, that caretaker can instead focus on what she, he or she was actually there to do. 
to use his or her medical, medical expertise to really make sure that Angel has the best possible care. Now, there's something important to note about this, is that there isn't any new technology here. The solenoid pumps that we can use to actually change the pressure have, a, have existed for the longest time. And the materials that we need to do, to do this exact same process have also existed for the longest period of time. So really, we're taking different things from different parts of science and applying it into a package that's ultimately useful for us. Now, considering all of the efficiencies and cost saving and the $191.6 billion that Canada spends every year, that's a good reason to implement something, but not the most important reason. The most important reason we want to do this is because in the end we want people to live better lives. We want Angel to be able to go to school, go to movies, go to, go to, go to school without really having to have a caretaker following her around all the time, having to adjust her weight all the time. We want her to develop self-confidence, independence, and safety. And we want to give the people that really care about her the peace of mind that they deserve. So as IB students, we have to consider being globally active. And we have to, we have to consider how this Im impacts people all over the world. Now, in, in learning something like this, I learned about four major lessons. The first, in the first step that I, the first thing that I learned when I thought about an idea like this was to not be discouraged. I mean, when I first looked at it, I thought, there are so many people out there that are smarter, older, more experienced, and better looking than me. How can I, how, how, how can I possibly, how can I possibly make an impact? I mean, that's, this is a huge problem. So my, my message to you is, um, everybody's ideas are just as valid and fruitful as anybody else's. And to yourself, your ideas might be obvious, but you should share those ideas. And in turn, those ideas might be innovative and revolutionary. The second thing is to find a problem first. So many people go ahead and put all their time and effort into looking for a solution, only to realize that there wasn't a problem to be solved in the first place. So find something that matters to you. Find something that you have, fat, have a passion for. Find your angel. The third thing I want you guys to remember is to narrow down your problem. As much as I would like to create a magic pill that solves everyone's medical conditions, that is simply not feasible. But if one of you guys in the audience like, finds the cure to cancer one day, feel free to like, put it into a pill, because that would be great. Now, the last thing I want you guys to remember is to stop overthinking and to just go. I mean, the worst thing that could happen to you is you could fail miserably. And, and, I, and I like to say, there is no such thing as failure, just learning opportunity. I mean, along the way to where you will be in your very, very successful future, you will have learned invaluable lessons about business, industry, technology, and most importantly of all, people. Now, when you guys are all famous and successful one day, I, I want you guys to remember me. But I also want you guys to remember this last principle. There are problems everywhere in the world waiting to be solved. There are things everywhere that can be made better. Along the way, it's not about the millions that you've made. It's about the people like Angel that you had a positive impact on. Always make sure that your ideas are meaningful to yourself, but most importantly, to other people. Thank you.